I don't know what it is. And I also have the list of questions that I'm I'm sure will be answered throughout this uh, meeting. Um, so if there's anything else that comes up, I'll make sure that if something doesn't get answered, uh, I'll bring it up towards the end of the slide or the presentation that's going to be occurring. So let's go. <laughs> All good. All right. Um, and I apologize in advance. Uh, my kiddos are here and they're about to eat. So um, hopefully it'll get quiet in just a few minutes <laughs> um, as they eat. Um, but just, you know, if I have my, my background, my soundtrack is home. Um, okay, so I think what I wanted to go ahead and do is, um, you know, definitely chat a little bit about um, creating this compelling marketing campaign. Um, I definitely agree with Professor Rain in that um, your, the way that you brand yourselves, um, um, you know, to an employer, to a graduate program is going to be unique in that you are coming in as a unique um, candidate, right, with multiple um, interests and, um, you know, just desires and, and passions and potentially multiple disciplines combined in one, right? Um, and it, Whittier is unique in that we have this, this opportunity where students can create their own major. Um, I have found that as I'm connecting with employers, um, when I talk about uh, WSP, they're intrigued and want to know, oh, you have students that combine, um, and, you know, and they're able to put together the different interests that they have, and so they're well-rounded, right? Um, and so it, it definitely sparks an interest in folks, and the one thing, though, that we do want to remind ourselves is that when you are submitting a resume in this case, um, that is your first interaction, right? That is the first impression um, you will be making with a potential employer, with a potential school, um, if you're continue, continuing um, in higher education. So you want to make sure that you are creating um, or putting out there the best story of yourself um, if, you know, that as they are reading through your document, one, that they're getting through the entire document and that they can get um, a really good picture um, of who you are as a potential employee, um, you know, the value added um, that you bring into their organization based on your um, uh, varied experiences. Um, so what I wanted to go ahead and just kind of chat a little bit today is um, go very quickly over a six drop search process that I recommend um, you all to, to consider as you embark um, on this next transition, whether that be right now looking for a part-time, looking for employ employment, or if you're even looking for a graduate school in the future, um, you know, think about some, some of these things. But we're gonna focus very much on the resume and what things to look out for, what things to consider. And um, we're gonna uh, go ahead and share um, a resume that I received. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and just kind of look at the pieces in that resume and um, you know, sort of bring up some things that um, would be great recommendations for you as you are putting yourselves out there as well. Um, any questions that come through, please feel free to stop me um, and we'll, we'll address those. So before we begin just diving into this branding campaign through your, um, your resume, it's important that you consider that it's part of a larger step process of getting yourself out there and connected and um, considered for opportunities. When I think about um, job readiness, I think about the six, uh, six step uh, job search process. Um, one, it's you know only six steps, right? Um, and so it's not as scary as I approach it. But when we think about this, you wanna think about one, what is the identi uh, identifying your target? Especially for you, know, for you all that come in with a vast interest um, you know, and, and, and various different maybe disciplines that you're combining, you want to make sure that as much experience as you have, you still want to let the employer know, you know, this is what I'm an expert in. This is what I can really do well. This is why you want to go ahead and hire me. There are certain organizations that are looking for folks that are well-rounded, but they're still looking for specific, um, uh, you know, skill set, specific interests, um, specific um, expertise. Um, based on the different roles that they're looking to fill. So what you want to do to be able to, you know, to 
approach this is identify what is my target? What's the industry that I'm looking at? What are some of the specifics within that industry that I would be interested in? Let's say it's the arts, right? The arts is, is arts and entertainment is so, so large. Um, it's, an in, it's a business, right? And so within that business, there are many different um, subdivisions that you could potentially be going into. You could be interested in the film industry, um, you know, within, within arts and entertainment. You could be interested in the legalities of it, um, maybe in the social justice and how that's, you know, sort of collabor co coinciding, um, uh, so on and so forth. So think about the, um, the target, who you're what you're trying to target, who you're trying to target. Because as you prepare your resume, cover letter, and everything else, you want to make sure that it's also aligning, um, that there's some relevancy there. So identifying your target is step one. Um, and we can definitely touch base and talk a little bit more about what that looks like. Then comes in and creating that compelling campaign, which part of that, um, you know, developing that marketing campaign for yourself um, is this resume. Um, and we'll talk about that. Um, research, researching the organization, the institutions that you may be applying for, um, so on and so forth. What are they known for? You know, how can I come in and sort of connect, right, based on my experiences, the classes that I've taken, the skills that I possess, how can I let them see there is a, there is a connection here that we can make, um, you know, that even though I come from two different disciplines put together, this is how it relates back to what you all have to offer. Um, you know, then comes in the, the networking and interviewing aspect of putting yourself out there and getting, um, you know, ready. Um, then comes in this idea of maybe I'm not hearing from folks, um, I'm getting rejections, right? How do I deal with that? How do I handle that? Um, is it that I need to maybe take some time to reassess what, how I'm approaching this um, job readiness or job, job search um, approach? Um, is it maybe that I need to assess that um, I'm seeing too much on my resume? Am I maybe not being specific enough? Am I not tailoring my documents enough? Um, you know, so there's, an, there's, there's this that I think this um, step is very important in this process. And then, you know, closing that offer, making negotiations, so on and so forth. So it's a process. That's what I want to get at, right? It's a process. Um, and so as much as you're putting it together, it is a process that will take some time. So when we, when we look at the second step, which is, you know, creating that compelling com campaign, it involves a number of different pieces and resume is that first piece, right? But there's a cover letter involved potentially. There's how are you pitching yourself? What are you saying about yourself, right? Um, when we hear about that elevator speech, it is a thing, right? Are you, um, are you presenting yourself in the best light? Are you taking that time that you have to connect with someone and really, um, you know, really uh, speaking about yourself highly, your skills, um, maybe the industry that you're looking to get into, the types of positions that you're looking to, um, to go for, um, all of these different things. So making sure that you are, um, when you're introducing yourself, that you are doing it in, in the best way possible. Um, and then your online profile, right? Especially right now with COVID, we've seen an increased amount of employers going into the various different online platforms to search for potential candidates. One of the main ones that has been used a, a lot is uh, LinkedIn, right? So there's about a 40, 45% um, of employers that do look on, on folks' profiles before, right, they reach out to you. So what are all these pieces saying about you? We need to remember that when we put ourselves out there, we are a product, right? And so what are we saying about this product um, that we are, um, you know, we're having, we're having folks interested enough that they want to go ahead and connect with us. What are we saying about what we bring of value to that organization, to those spaces um, that make sense, right? And that they want to go ahead and call us in, bring us in for that interview, and let us speak a little bit more about us, our skills and experiences. Um, so far, so good? All right. So when you hear this word resume, what are some of the things that come to mind? Um, feel free to unmute yourself and maybe share or use also the chat and share with us. Um, but let me take a pause here. When you hear this word, resume, what comes to mind for you? Um, one of the questions we actually did receive was, 
their first question that they think of with the resume is what should not be in a resume or like how long should it be um that was one of the main questions that came up in some of our uh registration yeah and i think that a lot of the times that's what comes to mind right when you hear about oh i need to submit a resume or a cover letter okay i have a three-page um you know resume should i submit that is that a lot is that not enough um you know am i saying the right things on there um yeah. am i adding way too much information and sometimes I have seen some resumes that do have a lot more information that really needs to be on there. So we'll definitely um, um, answer those questions for sure um, throughout the presentation. Um, any other things that come up when you hear this word resume? From folks. Work experience or volunteer experience that you've done that's relevant to whatever, like whoever the, I guess, reader is or um, whoever you're sending your resume to. Mm -hmm. Yep, so experiences and what what are experiences, right? What kinds of experiences? Mm -hmm. Anything else? I'm not sure. All right, I see something here in the chat too. Yep, organization, right? Um, that it needs to be well organized, absolutely. I think all of those things are, um, are things that do come up. Right, and I'm, and I'm glad that when you hear this word, you automatically are going there, right? Like, what is it that I need to say? What kinds of experiences count? Um, what types of experiences should I really be talking about? Um, do I add this side gig that I've had? Um, and the answer honestly to that is, if it's relevant, add it. Every experience is experience, whether it is paid, if it's unpaid, if it's an internship, if it's work, classes that you're taking, um, all of that are, um, is experience. And so I think what matters is how you articulate it on your document. Um, you know, it's a difference when you say um, cashiering, okay, great. Um, but it looks very different than when you say, you know, trusted, entrusted with monetary transactions, you know, utilizing um, cash and credit card formats, right? Very different. One, I started with entrusted, right? I was entrusted with this kind of transaction. So uh, what, how we articulate it really then um, is, is the, the valuable, the value that you wanna go ahead and add onto your document. But a resume really is that it's a professional document that should be outlining your academic and or professional experiences and backgrounds. Um, it, like I said earlier, right, it's a great place for you to uh, really make um, um, expose yourself right in a way in terms of what have what experiences have I had in, in a quick um, well organized document um, and so you want to talk about different types of trainings different types of experiences skills extracurricular if you are involved on campus you are gaining experience you are developing and enhancing skills that may be relevant to the positions that you are applying for. So do not minimize any of those experiences, whether they are, you're an athlete, um, you know, whether you are working on campus, if you are chairing a student organization or club or society, you're a member, right? Think about everything that you do as a member, as a president, as a secretary, these are skills that you wanna talk about and they belong in your resume. So it's a quick um, you know, snapshot of, of what that is. When you are thinking of your resume, I want you to consider the following few things. Um, and here, you know, we may be answering you know, that question that came up earlier, Maddie. Um, what are some of the things that you wanna consider when you're putting this together? It has to be tailored. So let's say you do have a three page document. Perfect, great. Let it be your master resume, right? Um, one thing that I tell students that come in is, Put everything down on your master resume. It should be three, four pages, right? But you're not going to be submitting that document to a position. You want to tailor it to the role that you're applying for. Um, when we talk about tailoring, um, you know, we're talking about if on my three, uh, four page resume, master resume, um, you know, I have a variety of experiences which are the ones that seem to relate more with what the company says that they're looking for? 
Are they looking for someone with great communication skills, time management? Are they looking with leadership skills, um, you know, specific software usage, specific languages? Where have I in, um, you know, been able to use those skills in all the different experiences I've had? Those are the pieces that I want to make sure are on my document. If there are some things that I have done, you know, that even though they may be great experiences, but if they are not relevant to what I am applying for, then we are, we may be uh, caught in this, um, you know, space where we're using up space, we're using up time that is valuable um, and, and we're not sharing what we really need to be sharing with that employer. Um, so make sure that it is relevant to the job that you're applying for, whether that be a job or an internship. Um, you want to make sure that it's accomplishment driven, right? So avoid just mentioning the tasks that you are performing. Um, you want to make sure that you are talking about what you were able to do for the organizations that you were a part of, right? So think accomplishments. What was I able to accomplish in this role during this time? Um, and you know, avoiding being wordy, sometimes that is a challenge, right? So one of the things that we, we recommend um, is that, um, and my colleague you know, used to call it brain dumping, right? Um, and literally is that. I want you to, when you're, when you're attempting to, to tailor or, or to start your resume, write everything down that you can remember you did in those particular roles. Everything from the moment you walked in through the moment you walked out. What were the things that you did? When you do that, what helps, what happens then is one, you're not going to forget, right, the things that you did. Um, and two, you're going to start to see, oh, you know, I, um, I mentioned this in this, you know, first comment, I did this, but it looks like I used this, um, you know, comment below to accomplish that. So now I'm able to combine the two. Um, you want to go ahead and avoid using too much and um, the, you know, just additional words that you really don't need to. You don't need to say, I accomplished this when I did that and that, that's too much, right? To the point. So maybe it's developed, um, you know, uh, developed um, web pages for um, uh, resources um, uh, side, yada, yada, using this, um, allowing for X, right? So removing some of those extra words um, that you really don't need um, as you're making a statement can also help, um, but that could help as well. Um, yeah, so when we talk about buzzwords, um, you are talking about really, one, you wanna be doing your research, right? On the company, on the uh, position that you're applying for, on the industry. Um, you know, when we think about the different positions that we are applying for, we want to think about these, this common word, right, of, of buzzwords, the N words that are um, trendy in that organization, that are trendy in that industry. So if you're applying for, you know, social media positions, um, you know, think about words such as campaign, social media campaign, such as um, followers, such as um, you know, the different uh, platforms that are utilized. Um, some of these words you wanna be interjecting as much as possible, um, depending on the industry, of course, uh, but you wanna use as many of those as you possibly can as you are putting together your statements. Um, and we'll, we'll go into a little bit more and why I think, uh, why we know it's, it's very important that you do that. But definitely making sure that your statements are accomplishment focused. Um, and we'll give some examples of what that means. Being consistent. So uh, this is very key. I, I know that you know a lot of the times we spend a lot of time on the content, which is the meat of your resume. But one of the things that can deter um, uh, a reader from continuing to read is a lack of consistency, right? And those could be simple things such as, you know, this first example, um, the occupation um, or the title was bolded, but the next one was high highlighted or italicized. Um, or here they provided the name of their employer, but not on this one, so I'm not sure. So you wanna keep it consistent. The format needs to be consistent throughout your document. You don't wanna leave any room for the reader to sort of be assuming what this means, what that means on your document. So following whatever, whatever you decide to follow in your document, 
make sure that it's consistent throughout the entire document. Proofread, 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 okay? Especially with cover letters. I have seen time and time again, different cover letters that are submitted. You, you may have a draft of one, right? And you're just gonna tweak a couple things here and there. But we've seen so many cover letters that are being submitted that you can tell this person has applied to multiple places because they forgot to remove the name of the past one that they applied for, right? Um, so I'm applying to Fox and I am saying that I'm, I'm looking forward to applying to ABC. I just applied to ABC. I forgot to change it on my document. Please proofread. If you need you know, myself to look at it, a faculty, a, a peer, please uh, proofread. No typos, um, you know, um, all those different things. Please, please do that. Um, making sure that the font type and size that you're using, do not use, um, you know, here goes another do not do, do not use font size as, you know, eight, nine, please, <laughs> right? As, as, as great of eyesight that we can all have, sometimes it becomes really challenging to read. Um, avoid using font types that are too curvy, right? They may look cute, um, but I can't read it, right? So the, as basic as you can, um, what you want is you want that message to get out. You want the person to be able to read through the whole document. Um, you know, if you want to be creative in one way or another, again, depending on the industry, right? Um, recommend using lines, using color on your, um, you know, categories or headings, things like that. But be careful with the font um, type that you use and the size as well. I wouldn't go lower than a 10.5. Um, and that's, again, depending on the font type. Um, I usually go with um, Arial Narrow just because I can get more words in. Um, and it's still you know, very readable. Um, and I'll go 11, maybe um, 10.5 sometimes on that. Um, Yes, when you're writing, uh, recommend, uh, when you're writing cover letters, do not use to whom it may concern you. Do not. As much as you can, try to find who will be reading um, uh, your documents, whether it is a committee, um, whether it's an individual who will be reading this document. A lot of the times that information is written on the job description, right, on the, on the section where it says, you know, email so-and-so, um, resume and cover letter. That so and so's information is what I would say, dear so and so. Um, if you're going through the, the different pages and you can't find the information as to who will be receiving this, I usually go with the safe thing and just, you know, either dear human resources committee, dear human resources department, um, you know, uh, something along those lines. But make it as, as, as personable as possible. And it all starts with that the dear to whom it is going to, uh, you know, be reading it. Um, so as much as you can avoid um, using to whom it may concern. Um, great questions. Um, using those, those action verbs, those, those buzzwords again, right? Um, as we discussed earlier, now we'll share a little bit more. Um, avoiding hard to read fonts and templates. I have nothing against templates. <laughs> I've heard some great things about Google templates. Um, I haven't looked into too many of them, um, but what happens with the template um, is usually they have, they, they develop boxes, right, on a document. And they have pre-written um, or pre-laid out templates with boxes, you know, here goes experience, here goes, um, you, know, you know, education, here goes skills. And a lot of the times what happens is if you have much more that you wanna add in, into one particular section, um, it starts to then get funky with the rest of the document, right? So if you had to ex extend a box, it'll start going into the next box and then it just becomes really challenging to format it. Um, and so I usually recommend just a simple Word document which you can sort of navigate and move and you know, uh, change things around much more, um, much more easily. So I strongly recommend just sticking to a basic um, Word document. Um, uh, avoid lying or over-exaggerating of experiences, right? So, you know, you may, you may be thinking, well, I've, I did this, but I really only answered phone calls. That's really all that I did. Then that's what you will say on your document, right? Um, but maybe we want to start to think about how many phone calls did you, did you answer? 
you know, what community were you serving? Um, what sort of questions were you bringing, were you taking on? Were you disseminating information on upcoming events? Were you, you know, connecting with over a hundred callers a day? Um, you know, you were handling difficult situations, um, you know, in, in any given moment. Um, were you answering phone calls and making copies, right? It may seem simple to you and you're like, well, that's really all that I did. Let's start to really dive into it um, and, uh, you know, really understand what it is that you did. Um, you may see it as just basic and you have, you know, you're like, I, I don't know what else I should talk about. Maybe I should add that I did this. If you didn't do it, you know, you're going to get called on it, right? Um, an employer may find that, oh, that's interesting they did that. They may ask. And so if you come in and have no example to share or you realize, yeah, I lied about that, it wouldn't be great coming into an interview, right? With, with something that you over-exaggerated on or, or said that really didn't happen. Um, avoid copying and pasting directly. So, you know, when we're talking about making it relatable, um, you don't want to look at the uh, job description that you're that you're thinking of applying for, um, and straightly copy and pasting that information. Yeah, I've done that. I did all of these things. Great, copy and paste it into my uh, my document. They put together the job description, right? They knew what they were writing about, who they were looking for. Um, so I would suggest that as you're reading the job description, sure, a couple words here and there, um, especially as you're picking up. These words tend to be used in all the different positions I'm, I'm looking at in multiple companies. So those are buzzwords, right? Those are common words that are being used um, for a similar type of uh, position at various different uh, companies. So a word here and there, sure, I would not do straight copy and paste from the document. Avoid using I statements. I statements belong on your cover letter, not on your resume. So what you wanna go ahead and start doing is uh, to start your statements using action verbs. I, I, I do not wanna see, I did this on your resume. For sure, do it on your cover letter, you know? I developed this while I was working here, you know, or as a front desk coordinator, I was able to, right? It's a letter, it's a different format. So, but not on your resume. As best as possible, um, avoid any time gaps. Obviously with, with COVID, right? Um, some of us maybe have, have lost our jobs. Um, maybe it, it definitely took a toll on us and, you know, we took some time off. Um, I think those are things that are understandable and, um, and you know, employers are seeing that. Um, but, you know, if, if there was a gap, just know that maybe they may ask, right? Um, it looks like the last time you worked was in 2017. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Be ready, um, if that is the case, if you can avoid it, right? Um, be ready to share. You know, maybe you were taking a training, maybe you were taking a sabbatical, maybe you were traveling, um, what have you. Um, so just be ready in, in terms of how you would respond to that um, if they ask you. But as much as possible, try to avoid that. And, and the way that you can avoid it really is um, maybe it wasn't working, right? Maybe I was taking a class. I was going for trainings, I was attending conferences during that time, um, I was caring for someone, um, you know, think about what it was that you did do during that time. Um, and let's figure out the best way to, um, you know, to share that on your resume. Okay, so 7.4 seconds. Do we know what this number means? What, what does this number mean to you? And if I, if obviously, it has something to do with resumes. But what do you think 7.4 seconds means? How long they look at it? Yeah. So on average, right, um, a reader looking through your resume will take about 7.4 seconds to make a determination of whether or not to move you forward. Seven seconds is, you know, so little. I mean, I could take a pause right now in seven seconds and we're done. Um, but it's not a lot of time, which means that you want to use as best as possible every single space on your document to make, um, you know, to take the message home, right? So if you need to maybe start off with your experiences, um, maybe because you've been out of school for some time, start with your experiences, right? Um, if you need to move your skills down um, to the last piece, 
put it down to the last piece. Let them see your education first and your experiences. Um, if maybe you haven't had a lot of experience, but you've taken many classes that are relevant, add your relevant coursework up on top, right? So that they can read that first. Um, so just remember, you know, just be cognizant that there is, um, that they do spend only 7.4 seconds on average uh, making a decision or reading through before um, they decide um, if they can move forward or not. Um, okay. When we're looking at this document also, it's important that you do, you know, remember what is it that that employer is looking for? And obviously we can't, you know, we can't be in, in everyone's minds, every, every employer and opportunity is different. Um, but we can make a lot of that um, or have an understanding of what that looks like as we read through the job description, as we read through the about us section of that company, right? Um, maybe you're going on LinkedIn and there's more information. Um, so definitely do your research. What does that company stand for? What are their values? Um, who are they working with? What types of people are they bringing on um, to their company, right? All of this is information that provides you insight as to how you want to go ahead and, and, and also come across, um, you know, do you uh, hold similar values as that organization? I want to mention that on my cover letter then, right? Um, so keep in mind the employer that you are applying for um, and how much um, information do you have about them that you can come um, and, and again, right, show relevancy. Um, definitely uh, keep in mind um, if on the job description they are saying, um, you know, these are some of the pieces that are required, right? If there's a list of things that are required, that means that that employer has found it um, uh, a necessity for the ideal candidate to have these skills or experiences or trainings um, to be able to do the work. Um, but there are certain employers that will say such and such skills are a plus, are preferred, right? So these um, are things that I would absolutely say, don't be scared about, apply, right? If they don't say required, um, it is something that they are hoping that you have that would make you, um, you know, an even more competitive candidate if you haven't if you have it, but it's not going to screen you out um, automatically. So pay attention to the wording, pay attention to what they're saying, um, you know, pay attention to the experiences that they're hoping that you have. I know a lot of the things that students will come in with is, I don't have those three years experiences. And a lot of the times what happens is this, you know, this, this challenge of our students to really see all of the experiences that you have had as an experience. So when we really start to go back in time and all the different things that you have done, you start to realize, wait, I've been doing that kind of um, position or that kind of work for the past two years. It was in a different environment, but it's the same skill, right, um, that I've been developing for the past two years. So now it's the, the mindset changes. I have had experience for the past two, three years. It's just been in a different environment, but it's still the same skill that they're looking for. So it's really important that you take a moment um, to really go back and just, okay, everything that I have done, um, especially, right, if I've combined multiple types of experiences into one, how can I articulate that? Um, you know, uh, so definitely taking the time to, to think, um, think back and put those together um, is very important. Are we all doing good so far? All right. So when, when we think about um, you know, skills that you want to make sure you are um, uh, really articulating on, I want you to think about um, uh, these skills here. And NACE is the National Association of Colleges and Employers. Um, it's our national association for all career centers. Um, and every year they put out a survey to uh, thousands of employers that are part of the, or, um, the association. And they are asking them, you know, things about what they're looking for um, in ideal candidates. And every year they come up with seven to eight um, top skills or competencies that they are looking for in all, um, you know, um, emerging or incoming candidates. 
And these were the top ones from last year. Um, the new ones are coming up, but these have been consistent for the past couple of years, right? So think about um, uh, you know, how you've been developing in some of these skills, um, whether that be through courses that you're taking, um, you know, internships, volunteer work, um, you know, trainings that you have had, um, you know, if you're a part of a team, think about how have I developed my teamwork skills? How have I developed my critical thinking, problem solving skills, my communication skills? Um, you know, these are skills that um, employers are looking for in all candidates, no matter what position, right? Um, so as you are, as you're looking through your past experiences, keep these in mind. Um, I'm going to share with you a couple others as well that given COVID, right, what are some of the things that are being sought out, no matter what industry you're going into, no matter what positions you are applying for. But keep these in the back of your mind as you are sort of trying to come up with how do I articulate the what that I have done. Think about these competencies. Um, there are also some additional skills that um, you, you know, a lot of different companies are, are seeking out, particularly post this coronavirus um, experience that we've all had. Um, the main one has been this adaptability and flexibility. So think about how have you um, developed or enhanced this particular skill. Maybe you were, um, you know, you were in an internship last year um, or, or a job, um, you know, in, in a specific role. Um, and, you know, you were working on a project, you were developing something and suddenly COVID hit, right? How were you able to adapt? How were you able to shift gears, right? Maybe you could say, um, you know, uh, developed, uh, uh, transformed, right? Um, in-person um, communication, in-person programming, um, uh, into online virtual events um, in a timely manner, right? So these are things that you were able to do. You were able to shift gears very quickly. Um, that's a skill that they're looking for. They're looking for someone who is able to, um, you know, come with time and uh, be adaptable no matter what is being thrown at you. Um, the tech savviness, whatever it is that, you know, your major is currently, how have you been able to incorporate or how are you able to incorporate um, technology, right? Um, especially with, with education, I've seen that a lot. Um, and so folks that maybe have an interest in education as well, and, and maybe are interested in going into um, higher education, um, what have you. Think about how have, what, some, what are some of the platforms that you have learned, right, over this past year to use? Um, what are you know certain programming or ways that you have engaged with your audiences utilizing technology, right? And think about anything that you developed. Think about anything that you made better, right? Um, all of these different things. They're looking for folks who can understand technology. And this is going for all industries. I mean, I'm seeing even within business, right? Um, within film, right? Uh, the, the arts. A lot of folks learning how to utilize their social media to be able to get content out. So think about how you have been able to leverage on your tech savviness and how can we make sure that that comes um, up on your resume. Um, yes, so uh, exactly, right? Um, using Handshake to find opportunities, using LinkedIn to find opportunities. There's an array of different um, uh, resources as well that I'm going to go ahead and share with you, uh, Maddie, um, post this event, some other resources, uh, resource guides that we have put together um, through our Thriving Authentically series that are um, particular to different communities, uh, but really are some really great resources um, for, for, for women, particularly there's In Her Sight is a great resource, Career Contessa um, is a great resource. Um, there's, you know, Girl Boss is another great resource as well. Um, and a lot of these different um, organizations are, are having not only promoting content, but are putting out their opportunities that are coming up that are looking for folks with keen skills and experiences. Um, but, you know, think about your creativity, your data literacy, what kinds of platforms you have been able to learn throughout 
to use to put together data um, in all of these different pieces here as well, right? So how can you talk about that and how can you incorporate it into your resume as best as possible? Um, so when we think about the, the basic format of a, of a resume, um, you know, these are the, the top pieces, right? Your education, your experience, any projects, extracurricular activities, skills, competencies. Really, these are the four main, and obviously your name and contact information. Top pieces, uh, you know, top categories that almost every, if not all resumes should, should have. Um, you want to think about also the industry, right? If you're thinking, for example, modeling career, acting career, some of those resumes may be very, maybe quite different, actually. Some of them may have, may require a photo. Some of them may require that you mention the name of the producer you worked with or the, um, you know, the film you worked on, um, so on and so forth. The majority of resumes should not require a photo or any demographic type of information. Um, and so, uh, you know, think about the industry that you're going into. Um, it, sometimes it is very telling depending on, on that. If you're going to be traveling abroad or working abroad, um, they typically a resume is called the CV um, abroad. Here we consider a CV more within, you know, higher education and it's a little bit different than your resume. Um, but abroad, a lot of the times they use photos. Um, and so, you want to think about, right, that if we go back to that step one, identifying your target, right, thinking about who it is that you are applying for, um, where to make sure that you are putting together the best um, document for that. So a real quick, just a real quick, I know we're, we're going to use, um, hopefully with time, we'll use um, um, a sample that, that one of your very own shared with us and allowed us to use. Um, but just real quick, right, um, the, the education section may look something like this. Um, obviously, your, your um, information is on top, front and centered, um, or to the side, but it's the first thing that the person will see, right? Um, contact information, how to get in contact with you. So all of that should be right away, first thing that they see and read. Um, for those of you that are just graduating and, and applying for full-time positions, I highly encourage you to put in education first. However, maybe you are a returner, right? Maybe you're an adult um, who was in the industry for some time, decided to come back, um, you know, get another bachelor's or get your bachelor's for the first time. Um, you probably then want to put in your experience first um, because you've had so many years of, of experience that maybe supersede your education. It depends on the industry, it depends on the position, but typically you want to let us know it's Bachelor of Arts in what? And I would say here incorporate the name, right, that you have given your, your major that you design and, and you put together with your faculty. I would say Bachelor of Arts in what, right? Um, for some folks may not understand what Whittier Scholars Program is, right? Um, they, they, they probably want to know what exactly is it that you're getting your degree on. But please do not forget to write down Bachelor of Arts. There are still organizations out there that um, may think of or they see Whittier College and they think community college. There's nothing wrong with that, but we want to make sure that they know you are graduating with a bachelor's degree and in what, okay? Um, some positions may require GPA. Most of the time it's internships that require a GPA. So that's a piece that really isn't um, as, as necessary all the time. Um, here's an example of someone who wrote down some relevant coursework um, and the way that they wrote it down wasn't just naming the course, especially for you all, right, that are taking a variety of different courses, um, depending on the position that you're applying for, give me the name of the course and give me a quick blurb about what you accomplished in that course. Um, again, here's an opportunity for you, incorporate, for you to incorporate buzzwords. Um, let's say you conducted a research on a particular company and analyzed their XYZ, right? Already there, I'm able to incorporate, analyze, and research those are buzzwords, especially in, you know, in key industry areas. Um, a question came in, and for students who hadn't finalized their major title yet, would putting individualized major be a good idea? Um, Andrea, can, um, can you share a little bit about, um, would this be a lot of um, sophomores maybe in that, it, in that um, moment? Or yes. do you have seniors? Okay. Yeah, I think that's what I had to put on mine. It was like, I just put like something that was like the idea of it. 
but that was it. Mm -hmm. Right, um, so the way the scholars program works, the students don't finalize the title of their major until their junior year. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's why I was asking what would it be to put down what they plan to title it um, or um, what would you recommend anyway? You know, I would recommend what they plan on, on titling it. Um, and they could put in parentheses right next to it, um, either preliminary um, or pending approval to some extent. If, if they're applying for a position, um, you know, if they're a sophomore, um, for a first year sophomore, they're probably not going to be um, um, applying for full-time roles. I wouldn't advise, right? Because that's 40 hours a week plus school work. Um, uh, and so I would recommend adding what they're currently thinking of titling and maybe just writing down next to pending approval or something like that. Um, for those seniors, right, or juniors, once they have had it um, finalized, then I would definitely use the title. Um, uh, it would be what I would recommend. Um, again, right? You, you, what you want to do is you want a chance to um, get that interview and then share a little bit more. Um, I would say add courses that you have taken that seem to be relevant to the position that you're applying for. Um, add past experiences that you have had to sh share a little bit more about the skills that you're bringing into that opportunity. Um, would be what I would recommend in this case. Um, I hope that answers y'all's question um, on that. Um, as you're putting together the statements in each of your different experiences, um, we use um, what we call CAR or WHO method. The CAR or WHO method really is the same, but honestly, in higher education, we like acronyms. <laughs> um, and so CAR and WHO really mean the same thing. Um, they stand for different things. Um, CAR um, stands for... Um, uh, you know, challenge, action, results, um, who stands for what, how, and outcome. So when we think about the challenge, we're really talking about what it was that you did. So what did you do? Action and how, right? How did you do what you said you did? So it's an action. Um, and the result and outcome, it's an outcome, right? What resulted from you doing what you said you did, how you said you did it? Um, and so in the, an example of this, I, I love using the Starbucks example, um, you know, for ex the first bullet there, served an, um, an average of 125 customers daily using strong attention to detail to provide quality products. So if we were to break it down, right, it doesn't matter which one, the, the car or who method, if we were to break it down, right, the what or the challenge was serve an average of 125 customers how you went about doing it, what action you took by using strong attention to detail, right? And what did that do for the company, for, you know, for you as in that role? Well, it allowed you to provide quality products, right? So what, that's the results that came from it. So depending on, on what experiences you're putting down on your document, I want you to think about what it was that I did. You know, was it answering phone calls? Was it, um, uh, I don't know, developing curriculum? Was it um, developing a social media campaign? Whatever that was, think about then how you went ahead and do it, uh, did it. Uh, I think this is where the importance of using action verbs um, or action words um, matters as you're putting together statements, you know, because if you're saying facilitate, develop, organize, my mind goes to, oh, what did you organize, right? What did you develop? So it allows you to then express that on your, on your documents. So start with an action verb um, and then think about how did I go ahead and do that? How did I you know, develop this? How did I put this together? And what did that do? Did it increase followers by 10%? Did it um, you know, increase um, academic performance? Um, did it allow for um, you know, more, more student participation and engagement? I don't know but think about accomplishment. Think about what it was that you did. For those of you that have an interest in the business side of XYZ, numbers are important, right? Think about it, it's, it's a business. They, they like to see return on investment, that ROI. So if you're able to share numbers, if you're able to say, you know, answered 70 calls and, and per shift, um, 
you know, it landed uh, 10 new customers, the I goes to a number automatically, right? So think about those things as well. Um, and again, it depends on the industry that you're going into. Um, another thing that you, you know, we can use this example here is that cons consistency that I mentioned earlier, right? On, on this um, example here, I could see that the person um, italicized their title um, and it's the same throughout. Um, they uh, um, put down the name of the organization and it's bolded throughout. Um, I see the, the location um, right after, right? And their, their time frame is on the opposite side and it's the same for all of them. Um, so you wanna keep that consistency. Again, it's easier to read very quick as I'm reading through it. Again, those 7.4 seconds, right? How can we capitalize on that um, and make sure that it's, it's coming up in that way? Um, in terms of, you know, some students will ask, well, how, you know, do you recommend I add the month or just the year or if it's summer? Um, whatever you decide to do, keep it consistent. Um, I typically recommend sticking to the year only just because it's, it's cleaner. Um, sometimes I can't remember what month I started. Um, you know, so uh, if you're going to use month, the only thing I recommend is if you are going to abbreviate, remember there are, there are months like May that you can't abbreviate, right? So already there, you're gonna see some kind of inconsistency. Um, so whatever you decide to use, make sure that you are consistent with it. On this example here, we, we noticed that this person, um, you know, did certain positions um, in summer. Um, and so they went ahead and continued on the same way. Um, I could see, you know, maybe them using fall if it was a, a semester worth uh, of an experience. So just that consistency is key. Um, and all of this, I, you know, you all are, are contending with additional pieces that maybe I didn't contend with when I started working, right? Or some of us um, um, a little bit older um, didn't contend with, right? And that's these, this idea of an ATS, so the applicant, um, applicant tracking system. Um, a lot of big companies tend to use this. Um, you know, so if you're thinking um, some of the big companies, uh, uh, you know, applying for some of these companies, more likely than not, they're using um, an ATS. And what an ATS really does is it screens out thousands of applicants, right? Um, which is why a lot of big companies use them. They may get thousands of applicants and they don't have thousands of recruiters to go through each resume. Um, so they'll use this type of system to rule out certain applicants. This is where it then becomes really important to find those buzzwords depending on the industry and also the format of your document. Some of these systems or most of these systems cannot pick up tables, you know? So if there's a table in your document, they may not be able to pick it up. If there's a graphic on your document, they may not be able to pick it up. So again, sticking to basics, um, to simplicity, sometimes it's, it's best. Um, and so when we're looking, when you're having to contend with an ATS, there are a couple of things that you wanna keep in mind. Um, again, avoid using, you know, things that are maybe hard to pick up, like a table, um, a text box, right? Um, logos, which I would not recommend anyway. Um, images or graphics, um, any other kinds of visuals, um, again, may not be picked up. What we're trying to do is we're trying to avoid being sent to the no pile, okay? Uh, and so you wanna make sure that you're avoiding some of these things so that if this, this tracking system, um, you know, on, on its back end, it's being told to filter out, you know, um, these types of folks, um, uh, you know, filter out folks who have this kind of education experience, filter out um, or filter in, I'm sorry, filter in these folks that have this kind of experience and education and skill the tracking system is going to be looking out for those words or for those pieces um, and put them in the yes pile and the maybe pile, right? Um, and if there are some of these pieces on there that are sort of avoiding it, um, then we're going to end up in the no pile. So just keep that in mind as you are applying. There may be companies that are using um, an ATS. Um, the companies that typically tend to use this are larger companies that um, 
um, you know, maybe may receive too many applicants, or um, uh, there are certain companies, um, larger companies, that may decide not to use that system, but it depends on the position. So let's say they're looking for someone within an executive level. They probably know we don't get a lot of applications, so they're not going to use an ATS system because they need more applications. Um, so really, this, this system is, is to screen out um, um, you know, thousands and thousands of applications that may come through. Um, so just some things for you all to keep in mind um, that are new, right? And more and more companies are using them. Okay, so, so far, how are we doing? I know we are at 6.30, and so I want to make sure that I don't keep you all longer than we need to, but any questions so far? Are there any questions that came through, Madeline, from the registrations that maybe we can address? Um, we actually got through almost all of them. Uh, there was only one more that was asking specifically about um, child development and if there were any um, let me get the actual response that they put. Um, it says, what do internships look like for a child development major? So let me go ahead and address that. And I, I have, um, you know, information regarding cover letter on this presentation as well that, you know, if we, if we want to, we can definitely go through or else we can just open it up for questions now. Um, but in regards to that question, um, I was a child development undergrad major as well. And, you know, from my recollection, some things have changed, um, but some things have remained the same. Your experience working with kiddos, um, your um, knowledge on maybe developing programming, creative programming, um, your skills with um, uh, creativity, your um, interpersonal skills, communication skills. Um, you know, if you're thinking of uh, depending on the role, obviously, child development, I don't want you to think of child development as just teaching, right? Um, child development um, experience can, hospital settings, right? Um, I interned as a child life specialist at a hospital, um, and I was working with patients, directly with patients, kiddos that were um, in a hospital for a long time. They needed support with homework. They needed someone to play at their bedside with them. Um, and so I developed curriculum to be able to do that with them. But it's a particular type of community, right, that I was working with. So I was able to utilize the concepts that I learned in child development, how they developed what they needed to be able to do the work that I did as that, as that intern. So think about the role that you are applying to um, and think about um, you know, the community that you'll be, you'll be serving um, and expand your, your, your options um, when, it, when it comes to gaining experience. Um, I think, you know, there are a lot of different positions maybe that don't require you working with kids, but you are enhancing your communication skills, your teamwork skills, your um, creativity, um, so on and so forth. So I think it really depends on what your target is, what you want to go ahead and go for, um, but expand the this concept of child development, the types of opportunities that you can for, go for. Um, with COVID, right, there's been a lot of limitations. So a lot of the students that maybe are interested in the education field um, and working with kids and using that child development background, um, I'm definitely pushing online learning. So if you've had any experience with online anything, make sure that you are mentioning that on your resume and as you are presenting yourself to anyone. Um, you wanna make sure that you're letting them know that even though you understand the development of children and adolescents, you understand that they're online, right? And this is how you've been able and how you're able to support their learning um, even in an online environment. So there's a couple of things that you wanna think about um, there. Um, so it depends, um, it really does depend, but expand the types of opportunities you can definitely go for. Um, not just within education, hospital settings, recreational, um, uh, entertainment, uh, museums, right? They look at for different types of, of skills, 
Um, but if you're working directly with kids, think about what it means to be a kid and what a kid needs, right? Someone who can communicate well, someone who can get at their level and be creative, um, things of that nature. Uh, I hope that answers that question, but would be that. Um, so how are we doing with time, Maddie? Um, I'm not sure because um, I'm not the host of the meeting. So I'm not sure how much time was actually in for this uh, meeting, actually. <laughs> um, so I can, you know, we can definitely open it up for questions from folks that have it, or if um, y'all can maybe give me a thumbs up if you want me to go through any information on cover letters, we can definitely do that. Um, or I can stop sharing and we can um, have more of a dialogue and answer any questions that um, any of the folks that are here would like to ask. Um, I'm just gonna go through here. Oh, we just had a question come in. Yeah. Um, okay, so when writing um, about your skills, what keywords can you add when seeing your experience at something, whether it be technical or people skills? So it depends on the role. Um, a lot of the times um, when you have experience that is more technical, it may not necessarily need an explanation. Let's say, you know, um, uh, it's more technology based. Um, maybe I know how to use a certain software, certain type of camera, certain type of equipment. Um, if I utilize some of that in a particular role, then I would most likely want to say, use that as the how. Remember when, you know, as I spoke about the, the car method or the who method, the how piece, um, uh, maybe I can use it there. Be not afraid of saying, you know, um, developed um, uh, reports, uh, utilizing Excel spreadsheets, you know, um, that were presented or um, allowing for, um, I don't know, accurate readings and analysis of whatever. Um, right, but I added that it, that's a technical skill, right? I, mean, I was able to use that. Um, I could also add it under my skill section and say, just name Excel, um, Adobe, uh, Photoshop. I don't need to explain those. Um, uh, people skills a lot of the times may come as communication, right? So let's say I, um, I worked with people a lot in my last role and my current role. How did you work with people? Um, you know, was it that you were answering phone calls in a friendly manner? Um, maybe in what you were doing, you were developing um, a, a welcoming environment. Um, you, uh, you know, were you, I don't know, showed great communication skills, um, both over the phone and digitally, um, those kinds of things as well. Um, if you work with a particular community, um, you know, let's say with kids and adults, um, you know, were you, um, meet, you know, were you developing meetings um, specific to parents, specific to kids? Um, were you working with groups? How big were those groups? Maybe you were a coach, right? And um, you were coaching five to 10 kids at once. Um, that calls for some kind, some, some form of classroom management, right? You were able to work with multiple people at the same time. So it, it assumes that you have the ability to connect. Um, so those would be some, some ways. Um, it really depends on, on the skill that you're trying to get across and also the position that you're applying for. Um, so I would say as you're putting together um, all the experiences that you have had, Think about everything that you did, how you did it, um, you know, by answering phones, by being in person, by, um, you know, working with others, um, all of these different things, what, what technical skills you were able to show in those um, key roles, um, and if they deserve their own um, specific section, by all means, create that section. Um, and I think that that's something that's also very important to consider when you're putting together this document is that it is your document. So at the end of the day, it really needs to be a reflection of you. Um, and so, you know, if you need to develop maybe um, from those, those basic 
um, categories that I mentioned earlier, if you need to develop an additional one, let's say a professional development one that shows all the different trainings, right, that you've had, add the section and add them in there. Um, if you want to change, um, you don't want it to just say experience, maybe it's a combination of um, work and volunteer experience. Title it work and volunteer experience. Um, so again, it's your document. Um, it needs to be a good reflection of who you are coming in. Um, and so you're able to tailor it a little bit more as well. I hope I answered your question. Um, if I didn't, please unmute yourself um, and we can talk about it. Cool, all right. Um, any other questions? Um, Andrea, I don't know if you want to go ahead and um, we can definitely stop here. Um, what I can do is I can share this whole uh, presentation with you all. Um, I know it's it's late, it's a Friday. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm providing as much of the info as I possibly can um, having you all here, but I can also share some of this with you for um, post this, this meeting. Um. I think that sounds like a good idea. Um, it's I, I see that there are still a number of people here in the um, in the meeting with us, and um, I'm just wondering. I'm guessing that probably ending here at uh, six forty-two on a Friday night is a good idea. Could people give a thumbs up or something like that, or uh, or would you like to discuss cover letters? What do you think? Okay. I think they all agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was just totally phenomenal, Sandra. So you're saying you could share the rest of the slideshow? That might be really great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep, I can go ahead and send that um, to you both, and then you can share, uh, distribute. Um, and I just want to go ahead and, and you know, one say thank you so much for this. I know that's a Friday evening uh, that you all took of your time, and so I. I commend you for that and I appreciate your engagement and the questions. Um, please feel free to reach out. Um, there are many other events that are coming up, um, some that are facilitated by myself and others that we have employers coming in. Um, and uh, upcoming, you know, next week, for those of you that may have an interest in the STEM in one, you know, one way or another, um, we do have women in STEM panel coming up next week. Um, and we have some amazing women that are, are going to be with us to talk about how they've navigated the world of work. Um, for those of you seniors, um, we will be doing um, resume reviews um, starting April. Um, and uh, the month of May is our seniors month, week, whatever you want to call it. So be on the lookout. Um, lots of alumni we want to bring back. Um, and so be on the lookout for any of those. Um, but if you still want to meet with me one on one, by all means, reach out, um, use Handshake, or um, simply email me. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. So um, I will, once I get the everything, I will make sure that I post it up on the Moodle page. So you guys will be able to take a look at this at any point. If we are not seniors, could we have our, yes, you can. Uh, you can actually have an appointment on Handshake with uh, Sandra, which is what I did before I um, was hired too. So it, I highly recommend it and you'll be able to get everything taken care of. Absolutely. So yes, please reach out. Um, those events will be for uh, seniors, but by all means, send it through. Thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate your time. Um, and I look forward to connecting with you all further. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.